Okay. So, for any of you that don't know who we are, we are Public Child Protection Wales. My name's Lucia Thomas, and I'm one of the founding members of, uh, of Public Child Protection Wales. So we, we, uh, we started this campaign, or this organisation, three years ago now. And within these three years, we have witnessed unity within communities, uh, different religions. We've just united the, uh, we've united the kingdom on one issue, and that is the protection of children. Woo! So today we have got uh, we have got numerous speakers. Every speaker have got their own views, and we just agree on this one issue that we want children protected. Now, back in 2017, all four governments in the UK signed up to what is called CSE, a Comprehensive Sexuality Education. Now, since then, we have actually seen this in practice in many schools, and governments continue to say that this is age appropriate. Now, in England, there is an RSE review, and this has taken place due to the uh, massive amount of complaints of this, uh, of this education and the harmful effects it has had on children. However, our government in Wales refuses to review any RSE resources. And we're not, we're not very happy about that. We need to push our governments to start working for the people. Yes. So today we have got a couple couple of speakers from Public Child Protection Wales and then we are going to have, uh, we have got Ria, la, 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 sorry, Rachel Manning, Rebecca Manning, sorry I'm always calling you Rachel, Rebecca Manning from Too Much Too Soon, so Rebecca Manning, she is one of the organisations that is in collusion with us along with 17 other groups and we're all coming together for the same issue. Other groups uh, or other organisations such as the Schoolgate Campaign, uh, where we've got Scotland as well. What is this what they're teaching children? We've got various other groups that are coming together. All these groups are there to offer advice and support to parents and teachers who do not want this education and do not want their children being indoctrinated by in, with these issues. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on our first speaker. And this is Adele Purchase. Adele Purchase is, uh, she's one of the founding members of PCP Wales. She is also a SEN teacher. And she can tell you what has actually been going on in some of the schools in Wales. So I would like everyone to give a massive round of applause to Adele. Woo! 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 Thank you. So, um, as Lucia says, um, I've been working with people with learning disabilities for over 20 years now. Uh, for the last five years, I've been based in schools and I work one-to-one -one or in small groups with um, children with learning disabilities. I work in um, SEND schools and then I also work in mainstream schools on a one-to-one -one basis. This education is not the only problem we are facing in school right now. School education needs a massive overhaul. We have a huge amount of children, some who are sane, some who have behavioral issues, some due to neglect or um, things like domestic violence, alcohol going on within their homes, children who are in care, are all suffering hugely at school. There is a robotic system in place and all children are expected to adhere to it. Just recently now, we school has started back up just a week ago. And I know for many of the schools, children are lined up before they've even entered. Blazers must be on, 30 degree heat. And you had children being sent home on their first day because their trainers weren't correct and their blazers are not correct. Yeah, I'm sat in the pupil referral unit for children who are in years 10 and 11 doing a literacy test with them, on a literacy test they cannot read. That they do not understand the context of these questions that they're being asked. I am working with children who are 15, 16 years old and still cannot do basic math. 
and we are plunging millions of pounds into this education. And yet children are just, they're left on their own when they're leaving school. Children who are in care are left on their own as soon as they're turning of age. And this is a huge, huge problem. We've got children with learning difficulties of all sorts in mainstream schools. Um, children who have got um, ASD, autistic spectrum disorder. Children, again, who have been diagnosed with ADHD. And as somebody who has ADHD, I feel quite strongly on this. Again, when we're expected these children who we know are having great difficulty sitting still, having great difficulty concentrating, and they are constantly being reprimanded and sent out the class because they are not able to sit down, shut up, and listen for a full hour in class. These children are then disengaged. They're not following the lessons. They become more unruly in school. They're sent home again. Then these children don't want to come back to school. We have children who have been off school for months. And when they finally do return because they haven't got a tie on, they are sent home again. School is a safe place. That is what we are being told. All schools have a well-being area now. What I see from working in these well-being, because I, uh, cause I go around many schools, I'm not just in one school, so I'm seeing what's going on in many schools. And you get up to the well-being area, and everything is now becomes LGBT the moment you walk through those doors. This is an LGBT safe space. Posters, flags, identity cards, pronoun cards. That these well-being centers, for somebody who is not going with an identity crisis or to talk about their sexuality, where are the safe spaces for these children? Where are the safe spaces for the children who have been sexually abused and want to go and talk to somebody? The children who are experiencing domestic violence at home or neglect at home, the children who are in care, where is these advertised safe places for them in school? Because I'm not seeing it. Another issue we have, of course, then, is this education. Um, there is children in the audience, so I am going to be very careful how I am wording things. I got the absolute displeasure of sitting in an RSE lesson for Ascend School, a mixture of year eight and year nine boys, with about eight children in total in this class. These are children who would be classed as learning disability. I just wanna, I, for, for those, a learning disability is somebody who has an IQ under 70. So they can have autism, they can have a range of differences, but their IQ will be under 70. A learning difficulty is then somebody who would be high-functioning ASD, ADHD, dyspraxia, dyslexia, but they can still have an IQ over 70. So this is, for, this is a class that I am in with children who have got an IQ under 70. This lesson was about diseases, um, the kind of diseases you can get from relationships. I'm sure you all know what I am talking about. With this lesson, I had to then was photos, photos of these diseases for these children to see what these diseases look like. Of course, then the children needed to know how these diseases are caught. So the different ways in a relationship that these diseases could be passed, the children were then taught about this. I sat there while these children had their hands behind their eyes saying, I'm scarred, I'm gonna be scarred. They did not want to see this. My concern was, one, we've now just given these children acts that they didn't know existed before this moment. And are these children now more likely to try it out? Because they haven't been told that these acts were wrong, that these acts they are underage for, and that because of their capacity to understand what they would be consenting to, that these children are actually very vulnerable. So there was no mention of what might be then done with this information that these children were now taught. My next concern was, if these children are engaged in any of these activities, well, who is that with? Is that with another vulnerable child? 
or is now somebody taking advantage of this vulnerable child? That any contact with these children in that uh, situation should be investigated. I sat in another assembly, and this assembly was for year nine, it was an LGBT assembly where it was LGBTQI, double A, double I, and I was supporting some deaf children in this class. And one boy, um, he was profoundly deaf, he didn't understand um, sign language, and English was not his first language either. He came from, um, he came from the Congo. All of a sudden, images of two men embracing um, and kissing came up on the screen in the assembly and this boy was shocked. He didn't know what he was looking at. Um, and it's very difficult as someone, I, as I, I, I face it sign, I'm not, you know, I'm not a level three in sign language. I find it quite difficult trying to translate this lesson to him in a manner that he would understand in any shape or way. Next comes up a video. So I request for the subtitles for a large proportion of the deaf children who were in this assembly this inclusive assembly. But there was no subtitle. Again, this assembly, this assembly was inclusive to one group of children only. It was not inclusive to the SEN children. It was not inclusive to the deaf children. Each and every school, as I say, I go into, there is at least one wall which is celebrating LGBT pride. Again, I worked in special needs school the other day. These children are, you know, they have profound learning disabilities. And again, they are being told to celebrate their identities and explore their identities. Children do not have the capacity to understand what they is being told to them. For them, they feel who they feel and they are whom they are and especially the understanding of stereotypes, the understanding of um, humour, sarcasm, things that need to be factual. So when you are giving this information that actually these stereotypes that we know as gender roles actually define their sex, we are causing so much harm. Our lessons are including pants, the NSPCC pants, and Initially, when my own daughter was in school, I thought that was a great thing. But actually, no, with it coming along the terminology in this lesson, it's actually very fun. The children have to sit there. They have to name what it is that their parents have given their name, you know, for their private areas. So they all talk about that and they all compare that. Then they cut out underwear, draw their underwear all in pretty colours and we just opened up a whole classroom of young children to confidently have a chat about their private area. This is not safeguarding. Nowhere in any resources that we have seen so far have we seen anything detailing in grooming. But yet when you read these resources you realise this is enabling grooming. This is showing adults how to easily and openly engage in conversations with children that they should not be engaging in. We should not be celebrating sexualities in primary schools. We shouldn't be having, we shouldn't be discussing, we wouldn't be going into class, we shouldn't be joking with the girls, oh which one of these boys are you going to marry, which one's your boyfriend? So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be doing that around a heterosexual relationship with a child, why are we trying to engage children into other sexualities of a child? We just shouldn't be discussing them. Children are there to learn. They should know they should feel safe. And yes, they should know that everybody should be treated equally. Yes, they should know to respect all people of all natures and not to judge on the way somebody looks or the way somebody acts, or the beliefs that somebody may hold. But in the same way that we have always said, you should not push your religion onto somebody else because their beliefs are their own. That goes the same for gender ideology. 
You cannot pursue beliefs, they are not facts. No child can change sex. And we should not be telling those that he can do. You want to wear a dress, wear a dress. You want to play with action man, play with action man. But it does not define your biological sex. And in telling children otherwise, it is abuse. It is harmful. It's difficult working in these schools and it's difficult seeing this rolled out. We are seeing a high graphic of what this is being rolled out. Again, it is the SEND children who are buying into this. It is the SEND children and the children who have experienced abuse who are looking to escape the bodies that they are in. But it's not their bodies they want to escape, it's their mind. And their mind is not being changed because they're now on puberty blockers and wearing a dress. This has to change. Thank you for listening to me speak. I could speak all day, but we've got to keep this going. And um, yeah, thank you all so much. And just keep up on, keep on the fighting. Hello.